Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Allgood from Broad Productions, and today I'm going to show you the proper way to convert and export your videos out of Apple's Final Cut Studio. Uh, first of all, if my voice pops and you hear some mic feedback, please excuse me. I uh, misplaced my mic stand, which had my pop filter on it, so uh, I jerry-rigged this stand. Just kidding, I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> I'm actually uh, holding this mic handheld, so hopefully this works out. But regardless, let's go ahead and jump into it. I am in Final Cut Studio uh, 7, I believe. I'm not using Express. I'm using the Pro version, but I am never use the Express ver version, but I'm pretty sure it's just about the same for this. Um, but let's go ahead and import some footage. Um, I will just left-click on my browser, import. Uh, we'll go and do a whole folder. Um, I will find my footage. Uh, we'll get, you know, some random. Um, we'll do flying with Brandon. My brother, he's a pilot in the Navy, and I went flying with him, and it was a great time. Um, and then, we're going to right-click on the folder we just imported and go to Media Manager. There we go. One big turnoff to Final Cut, which I don't know why Apple has not done this yet, it is not H.264 native. And with the advancement of DSLR filmmaking, um, it all it all shoots in compressed H.264 footage, which you have to convert for um, Final Cut. But competitor programs like Premiere uh, support it. So I don't know why they haven't, so you have to convert this, but... Regardless, it helps out so much in the end um, because H.264 is a finished result like web type compression to where what we're about to convert it to Apple ProRes is much more of an editing codec. So you're much more of a professional editor by converting your footage to this. It makes it easier. In the long run, it's just better. Um, so we're in Media Manager right here. It tells you your original file size and the modified it modified um converting to ProRes will make a massive difference because it is somewhat uncompressed so it will be large file size so make sure you have room with it you can always delete it afterwards and always reconvert it if you need to later so don't worry about the file size just make sure you have time to store it while you edit um and you will click on well i guess yours might say copy as it will um by default but you want to go to media recompress there we go um, so you want to recompress the footage recompress media using click that holy moly look at that uh, sorry about that um, it, <laughs> uh, a whole crap ton of this and you are just your mind is just getting blown because you're mentally gay what artist is that he started on YouTube come on trivia questions inside this YouTube tutorial <laughs> But really, though, if you can guess the artist in that line from whatever song, leave a comment below. You'll be special. All right, getting too off topic with this. But um, find out what footage you shot in. Um, rather it be HD, non-HD. It probably is HD. Um, what frame rate? And uh, it was it 1080 or 720? Um, most of the time... Well, first, let me explain this. There's ProRes 422, ProRes 442 Proxy, LT, and HQ. Um, there is a significant difference in all of them, but it depends on what you recorded on to determine which one you need to shoot. If you're shooting on an, a, a DSLR or lower, which means any DSLR, any prosumer video camera, any consumer camera, anything, you don't need high quality. High quality should be for like... Uh, any airy cam, uh, you know, 35 millimeter film, convert digital converted film, um, red cam, pro, like 4K footage and stuff. So uh, you'll you'll think you recorded in something high quality and special, but you don't need to click that. It just wastes uh, memory. Um, so you just want standard ProRes 422. Now, depending on your footage, pick whichever settings go best for you. It's only from here to here. Make sure you can see that. Make sure not to click 8-bit or to this proxy. Um, I, I shot this in 1920, 1080 at 30 frames a second. So we'll go ahead and click that. 
Um, you can leave all this the same, just how it is. Uh, check these two. Um, actually, you don't need to delete unused media from the duplicated clips, so I'd click that. So, um, just uh, just so it you know doesn't accidentally delete anything you need. Um, you can change the file name to whatever you want. I usually keep it on existing file names so that way I'm familiar with them. Um, and then you just change the destination to wherever you want. And for this tutorial, I'm going to put it on desktop. I wonder what folder that is. Choose and click OK. Oh, and then it will ask you to save your project. So I'll put flying reconvert just as my reconvert file. Go ahead and save that on the desktop because I'm saving my footage there. Click save and it is going to process the files and it's going to write all your audio and video and then it's going to be wonderful. This may take, depending on how much footage you have and the speed of your computer, it could take anywhere from an hour, 30 minutes. For me, um, for probably 20, 25 minutes worth of footage, um, it's going to take around half an hour. So not too bad, but uh, inconvenient that is. So we'll go ahead and let that finish and when it's done we'll get back to it. Alright I was too lazy to sit down and let it all convert so I already I just got some footage that I already converted a couple weeks ago on a skit I worked on. So um, with the converted footage you will just drag it to the timeline. Boom. Like anything else. And as usual for best performance you want to click yes to this um, because all your footage is now the same codec ProRes 422 um, so you want you want you know your your timeline to recognize all of it. So click yes, and now as you can see, no rendering, none, because it is Apple native. So yeah, that's us talking about audio stuff. Um, but as you can see, it all plays back in real time and everything. It's fantastic. So um, you'll edit everything together, do everything you would do in Final Cut, get your video completely finished, and then, um, and then you would export it. So let's go ahead and get to that section. We will go to File, Export, QuickTime Movie. I, I wouldn't use QuickTime Conversion because it's not as customizable as Apple's compressor. Um, so the QuickTime Movie... We'll just export it straight as a ProS 442, the same file footage that it's already at, just you know, put together. So there's no quality loss. It's just putting it in one giant file. A lot of people will think, "Oh, you exported it so many times." No, you're not. You are since you're doing everything in ProS 442, it's not you know hindering your quality because you've exported it. Um, so this is good. So I'm gonna call this blah blah blah. I actually wrote black 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 because I forgot I guess I don't know how to type um, so black black uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and save black black uh, keep all this the same because you want your settings to be in the current settings so it's the ProRes same thing you converted and click save um, same dialogue as when you converted it it's gonna continue to write audio and video um, in the meantime I guess I'll go ahead and open up compressor so go to your applications Let's find compressor. Um, it's like the Mercedes, except with a C. I spelled compressor wrong in that Mercedes. My export just finished in Final Cut, and here I am in uh, compressor. It's going to start off with these templates. Um, no, click cancel. We don't use templates in the professional world. We do things depending on what our footage asks us to do. So. Um, compressor might look confusing to some, but really it's nothing special. You have your preview um, area. This is just right here. Your history just tells you what you've recently exported. Um, the this is like where you drag your footage, and then this is where you this and the the settings and inspector is where you figure out your settings for the codec and compression. So first things first, let's go ahead and add our file. So at the top left corner, click Add File find your file um, black black open and then this this well I I almost just got my hand to the screen and started circling black black because somehow you can see my hand um, that'd be really creepy though all right so let's go ahead and drag in what uh, what compression we're gonna use on our video so in the settings box in the search type in h.264 now this compression is the best for uploading to YouTube 
um, uh, VMO, any any web or internet source. Um, it is the the top dog for internet streaming and stuff. So um, all this is going to pop up. <laughs> Go scroll down uh, past the iPod. Uh, icons and you'll see h.264 lan that is the most high quality preset on here so just to save us some time we'll go ahead and use that drag that make sure not to drag it here but rather on your clip so drag it on there uh, click it and now your inspector starts up with everything you need to know go to the second tab here uh, the encoder tab and uh, you'll see it's in a quick time movie and then video and audio you'll see settings for both go ahead and go to video setting go ahead and keep data rate at automatic it'll just use the quality slider rather than figuring out how many kilobits you want a second so go ahead and drag your slider to best and make sure it's on best quality multi-pass um, and then we'll change our frame rate uh, for this I recorded in 29.97 um, if you're using any sort of camcorder, it typically records in 29.97 unless you change it yourself to 24, which you would know um, you were doing. So, for the most part, it's in 29.97. So, go ahead and click OK. Oh, Final Cut's popping through here. Go away, Final Cut. Um, so now, um, you're recording in the correct codec. Now let's change the geometry so that your video... Um, file size is right so um, this is in full 1080 HD which is 1920 by 1080 you might have recorded in 720 HD which is 1080 by 720 so depending on which click on whichever one goes for you for me it's uh, 1080 so click that and everything is good to go our compression is set for quality and then our file size is right so save as a preset you click save as type whatever you want uh, click cancel Oh, wow, I'm dumb. Click save, but for my instance, I'm going to click cancel. Um, I'll go ahead and take this out. And then it'll show up here under the customs preview. So now you can just drag and drop the same preset right on it. Every time you go in compressor, it makes it super easy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drag mine on there. Um, you can change the file name to whatever you want. Um, typically, I leave it whatever it is and change it later because I'm lazy. And you click submit which I'm not sure why you have to submit it again but uh, hey whatever so uh, make sure your file names right um, obviously you want your cluster on this computer your priority high that way your computer uses more RAM power to render it out um, if you're doing something on your computer put it on low that way it will not make your computer as slow as it's as it's exporting out but it'll take four times as long to do it so I typically keep it on high and leave my computer for the time being and then click submit and here it is um, totally you know exporting out um, sometimes I've had some problems with the compressor where it'll say it takes like an hour or so um, before it's done compressing um, which freaks me out cause I'm like oh god it's like a two minute video why is it taking hours to export but every single time it gets about 30 40 percent and then swooshes all the way to done so I'm not sure if that will happen to you, but it happens to me almost every single time I use compressor. So I don't really trust the time remaining or the status bar, um, but typically it, it doesn't take that long. It takes under an hour, um, depending on your footage. Um, one thing I actually forgot is to set your destination. Um, right next to the settings clip, you go destination, uh, click Apple. You can either, for default, it's your source, so it's wherever your you imported your file it'll drop it'll export it in the same folder but most of the time just to save myself and know exactly where it is I throw in desktop so you just drag that on and now this changes so if you look at this it says your compression where it's saving to and your file name and that's it it's all you need to know sorry if this took quite a long time to explain I tend to go on and on for more Final Cut tutorials and some tutorials on other programs within the Final Cut Studio um, package um, check out the rest of my the videos on my channel um, I work really hard on them and you know they gotta put food on the table and I would just really appreciate it if you just like checked out all the other tutorials <laughs> whoa what was that um, hope this helped leave any comment or video response uh, below and I will try to help you out with any problems you have 
Um, I probably won't message you back through a PM because I get so many daily, and most of them are spammers. So, leave a comment below. Um, I'll try to get back as soon as possible. You guys are fantastic, and thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time.